Hi, I'm Ed Hammerly from NJ Renewable Energy. There are many reasons to install solar on your home. I'm going to show you how I did it and why you should. One other great feature about this system is that it's being installed on top of a super therm white roof. This should drastically increase my production during the summer months when the roof would typically get very, very hot. Before you start any renewable energy project, conservation and energy efficiency must play a major role. But once you have reduced your energy demand, you can then design a system around your needs. And when designing a system, you must take into account roof size, orientation, angle of roof, and any shading issues that may exist. Even snow and wind loads must be calculated. We've addressed all these issues, applied for the proper permits, and now we're ready to begin. I hope you enjoy the installation. One fantastic product we're going to install today is the PV Quick Mount. It's essentially these two parts, an aluminum flashing with aluminum square and a lag bolt with machine threads on the opposite side. It's quick, it's easy, and extremely effective. The Quick Mount tends to be more expensive than other methods. However, the cheaper methods run the risk of water leakage or are extremely labor intensive. Okay, so let's get started. I've already marked my roof rafters with a chalk line and have loosened my shingles with a flat bar. I now mark with a pencil the point at which I will be drilling my pilot hole. I also made sure that the flashing didn't hang over the edge of the shingle. This is done to prevent debris from collecting underneath of it. Once the hole is drilled, I fill it with an asphalt shingle manufacturer approved silicon caulk. As you can see, I've already attached my combination rubber gasket metal washer. Both the gasket and the silicon will ensure that no water can penetrate through the roof. As it tightens, I turn the block on an angle so that water will not build up behind it. As a redundant safety measure, we add a second rubber gasket. We now add the L foot in preparation for the Unirack racking system. Now that all the PV quick mount is secured, we start attaching the rails. During the quick mount and racking system is the only time we use the impact driver. We still use it gingerly here, but during some of the other applications it's important not to over tighten. You'll notice on the L feet that there are two holes for rack placement. I strongly recommend using the upper hole for two reasons. One is that it gives better airflow under the panel keeping them cooler which makes them run more efficiently. But secondly, it gets you over top of some of the other obstacles on a roof. Now that all the rails are installed, we'll start working on the microinverters. The end phase microinverter. Uh, of all the uh, items that I've shown you on this video so far, this is by far the most exciting. Uh, a change in, in the industry, I'd say the biggest change in the industry in the last 50 years. 
Uh, what the microinverter enables you to do is, as opposed to having an inverter, which is the way they've been doing it uh, since they've started, which is having a DC inverter in, say, your basement or on the first floor um, for the entire system, maybe have one or two or three, depending upon the size. In this case, we're going to have a microinverter at every single panel. And what that does is it changes the, the game completely. Um, it lets you evaluate every single panel on its own to see what it's producing. Um, it will actually convert the DC to AC power more efficiently. It lets you use different modules. You can use a Sharp 224 and uh, a Sun Power or whatever it is. You can use any panel. Uh, you can mix and match. Um, the best thing, and the reason why I'm really using it on this project, is for shade. If you have shade issues, you need a microinverter. And what that does is it lets every panel function on its own. If one panel is in the shade, um, it won't affect the other ones. The way it's done now with, with DC conversion at the ground level with one microinverter is that, excuse me, one inverter, is that if one panel is being affected by shade, it will affect all the panels in that series back to the, to the, to the main inverter. Uh, you no longer have that problem. Uh, this thing, it, it's the wave of the future. Another added benefit to the microinverters is, is let's just say either from financial reasons or a shade or you hadn't built an addition yet, whatever the case is, you've built the system and at some point you decide you want to add on. Uh, with the older way of doing things, you typically sized your inverter downstairs, the one for the size system that you have. So if you wanted to add anything, it was impossible. With these, you want to add more panels at a different time, you want to change the panels uh, you have an addition where now you can add more. It doesn't affect the existing system, and in many cases, you can either add to the existing branch or create another branch and continue onward. Um, so it just adds more uh, versatility in your system. And if that wasn't good enough, it now eliminates the problem of having panels facing two different directions. In the old way of doing business, both these arrays would have to be on two completely separate inverters. Now it doesn't matter. Every single panel operates on its own. Before each microinverter is installed, we first remove the barcode identification number. We now place this sticker on our solar panel map. Upon completion, we will mail this to Enphase. They will add this to their microinverter database and we will be able to track it day or night on the internet. And as you'll see later on, we'll be able to monitor every single panel on its own and find out what it makes hour by hour, minute by minute, day by day. As we secure each microinverter for each panel, we do our best to space them evenly between each side of the panel. Keep in mind, the cord to get you to the next microinverter is only 5 feet long. So dependent upon your installation situation, you may need to think about where to place an inverter and what order you daisy chain them together. This particular M190 inverter can only handle 15 microinverters on one branch. Since this installation has 25 panels, we're going to have 15 on one branch and 10 on the other. Here we are mating the microinverter wiring harness. You twist it until you meet resistance and it clicks. But don't be surprised when you still see thread showing. This is what the connector should look like when you're done. It's also extremely important to put the end cap on the last microinverter. This is to protect it from any moisture or debris. Once all the inverters are installed, the grounding process begins. Here, a bare number six continuous ground is attached to every single inverter. Grounding is critical to protect both human life and equipment. Once this is complete, we now ground the racking system. This is accomplished with another bare number six continuous ground. Here we use a grounding lug and a grounding lug weave. 